Hey man, I sorry it took so long for me to get this video to you. I've been just screwing around. Anyways, you've asked for some views of the undercarriage. So I got her up on jack stands and I'm gonna jump underneath in a little bit and show you what's up. Okay. Uh, okay. All right, so right off the bat, uh, I'll take a look up here. So here's the main, main fra frame rail. As you can see, it's nice and straight. Uh, sorry if the picture's so bad. I, it's, uh, this is the best I can do right now. I don't have much space, unfortunately. Anyways, I don't know how good you can see, but there's the main rail. It's nice and straight. This here, it's hard to see, but this here, this is part of the inner fender where I'm shining light. And that's where the top of the air box rests on. And it's hard to see, but when the suspension came loose, the wheel came up and hit this part right here. So it's tweaked up a little bit. So the air box won't sit flush on it. And therefore it won't bolt into the bracket that's on the uh, the upper radiator support there. So that's one thing. And then another thing right off the bat, here's the here's the lower radiator support. You can see it's, it's supposed to be perpendicular. It's supposed to be going straight up and down. You can see it's tweaked back. Uh, amazingly, amazingly though, none of the Radiator support, none of the radiator brackets or anything are broken or anything. You can't see from here, but I'll, sh I'll show you from up top. None that's broken, which is surprising since I did one of these before and I had to replace all that stuff. Here's the other side of the radiator support. As you can see, it's perfectly straight. So that's what it's supposed to look like. I know it's hard to see, I'm sorry. Anyways, uh. This side is completely untouched, just as it left the factory. I haven't, even the suspension on this side, I haven't, I haven't touched anything on this side. It was only left side that took the brunt of the damage. So everything you see here is factory. No, nothing here got hit or anything like that. This here, the, this here, the subframe, I changed that out just because it was much easier to just change out the entire thing than replace. Because what happens when the suspension breaks loose, it takes these corners and just bends the hell out of them. And so it was just easier to replace this entire thing than try to fix the, the little, little pockets that the suspension sits in. So yeah, that's that's been replaced. Can look up here, look at the engine. I mean, it's only got 30, 30, 35,000 miles on it, so it's not leaking or anything. I, I'm so sorry if the picture sucks. Um, here's the, you can see the frame on the other side. I'm gonna try to be as honest and honest about everything because you seem to be a pretty cool guy and you know what you're doing, so yeah. I'm gonna try to show you every little thing on this car because I know what it's like to purchase cars uh, unseen. So, I hope the light's good enough for you. I'll crawl back there in a little bit. Want you to, want you to see everything. It's, it's so difficult to see. Yeah, I'm gonna try to get a brighter light. Oh yeah, there we go. Now we can see a little better what's going on. So this is the side that was hit. So I got new control arms, new shock absorbers. Even the spindle has been replaced. Uh, yeah, all this is new tie rod ends, sway bar links, all that stuff. I even have the parts for the other side in case for whatever reason you want to replace those as well. I have all those parts. Just a, here's just a quick look up here. So you can see the inner fender here. Just 
you can see everything see, seems to mount perfectly. I don't see any signs of anything that, you know, any frame pieces, any parts of the unibody that have been twisted or shifted or anything like that. So that, that looks all good because this is the side that got, got the biggest hit. All right, here we're looking at the floor on the left side. Uh, let's see if I can just part of the rail that goes into the transforms into the floorboard is the floor on this side let me jump over to the right side all right here's the right side the floor on the right side uh, everything on the right side is seems absolutely perfect uh, like there's barely a ding on the floor. There's a few, like you'll see, there's a few scuffs here and there, just cause this thing obviously must have bottomed out when, when or hit a bunch of stuff when it, when it had, had its wreck. But yeah, that's, this is the right side. There's really nothing to see over here because, uh, yeah, there, there's some of the scuffing. But other than that, everything on the right side, is, I mean, looks like factory. I want to be as honest and transparent with you as possible, so I'm actually I'm gonna pop this pop this panel off and show you how it looks like underneath because this is where most of the force of the impact went. All right, so up here, this is where a lot there. This is where there was quite a bit of damage. Now, so when the suspension came loose. The wheel came up, the wheel came loose and hit right here and right here. It sort of like made an indent of the imprint of the wheel itself. So this had a nice big crease going right along here. Like the metal was just folded in here and it was folded in right here. And did not, the, the frame itself on the other side is perfectly fine. It just nicked this outside part right here. So this section here, this entire section here, here had been had been cut out and sectioned section back together. So this whole section has been added, uh, repaired, and yeah. So this whole section has been replaced. That's that's how it's supposed. This gap here, that's how it's supposed to be. That's how it comes from the factory. I I've been looking at a couple other cars at the junkyard and and how it looks like on the right side and that that's about what it should be um these are the factory spot welds i haven't drilled any of these out i've taken care not to compromise any any bit of the frame this piece right here i started pulling on it i tried to pull it out just was too difficult so i just cut out this piece and sectioned in a new piece right here this piece this is where where i started getting discouraged on this project because i my welder was starting to my welder was taking a crap and just I had so many other things to go going on. I was just getting sick of it. So this piece here, I didn't finish spot welding this piece piece into place. So you can see I you still see the holes where I was planning on spot welding it. And this floor I didn't finish finish uh, hammering down because up here this was all pushed in. So I managed to get all this hammered out again. Yeah, I don't know if I mentioned to you that this had to be finished spot welding i mean it's in there just not i it's not how it it's not in how it should be i when i decided i was going to sell this i i uh painted over everything so everything's rust proof i've i've used sink i've used well through primer on all all the welds and everything like that so there shouldn't be any issues of corrosion or anything like that so yeah all right, moving to the back here. As you can see, this is this is what the back looks like. It, I mean, I I don't see any issues back here. From I spent hours looking at the body of this car, so uh, I've I've looked at every single nook and cranny in here. So from what I've seen, it looks all good. Here's here's differential. Factory exhaust. All right, now 
Let me show you what, what's going on with the rear end and why this thing doesn't want like to drive down the road. Road easily. All right. Here's the right side lower control arm. You see right here, right here how it's like bent out like that. Yeah, that's, this is supposed to be straight. Yeah, you see how it's bent in like this bent out right there yeah this is supposed to be straight and then this piece and then this rod right here it's not supposed to be as curvy as it is right now it is supposed to have a little curve to it not that much so this piece is definitely toast and this piece is toast um, I'm gonna jump over to the other side and show you how it's supposed to look like this is what a healthy control arm is supposed to look like notice how nice and straight here notice how I don't know if you could tell but notice how this is much straighter as well other than that the rear looks fine and that everything else looks perfectly fine like this this subframe is real big beefy beefy con piece of construction here so I don't see anything really going bad with that I've looked at its mounting points Oh, uh, you can't see. Anyway, yeah, like, uh, I've looked where it mounts to the body. Uh, where it mounts to the body, and it looks looks symmetrical on all sides. I don't really see any issues. I've looked over all these little mounting points that look like they could be a little flimsy, and possibly bend. They all look fine. So, yeah, that... This, can't see, this is the biggest issue. It needs to be taken care of. Everything else, everything else looks all right. So that's pretty much it, I think. I'll show you up a little, up a little above as well. Um, I have, I believe, I think I'm gonna, I've, I'm almost positive I'm gonna, change out these suspension components i'm gonna do both the right and left just to be safe because i've had so many people contact me wanting to drive this this thing home so i think i think i'm gonna do that just just because i've had such people have been i've had such a demand of people wanting to actually take this drive across, across country with this so that's probably what's gonna happen i'm probably also gonna replace the low radiator support as it's close to the it's not touching the 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 pulleys on the engine but it's real close which i'm not comfortable letting anyone drive sorry I'm not really comfortable letting anyone drive across country with the radiator so close to the to the engine so that's probably what's going to happen and uh, yeah, let me let me show you. So let me show you underneath the hood. All right, here's underneath the hood. See, there's not much. There's not really much to see other than factory SRT stuff. Um, it says factory upper radio support is completely straight. This is what I'm talking about here, where the airbox won't mount on its tab. Um, yeah, because of an accident, the tab broke off. Anyways, there's supposed to be a little bracket that goes onto the airbox here. And because that, that piece of the inner fender is pushed up so much, it won't, it won't mount on that tab anymore, which is no longer there. But yeah, anyways, everything else in great shape. Really nothing to point out. And hood, hood closes like butter. Hood's in perfect shape, no damage. And not even, there's not even really, you know, there's not even rock chips or anything on it, which is great. Yeah, start it up for a quick second just so you can hear that the engine runs and makes no weird noises or anything. AC works beautifully. 
mean, if it wasn't for the rear suspension, I mean, this thing would drive perfect. I got, yeah, um, I got, there's, these aren't the original wheels on, on the car, obviously, because they, they were damaged beyond repair, so I'm missing two sensors, so that's what's going on there. I have the parking brake on, obviously. But, um, these lights, it's, a. Uh, a damaged uh, wheel speed sensor. I have one, so which I which I'm gonna throw in before anyone buys the car. So there, none of these lights will be on. Oh yeah, it's pretty good. So that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I hope that answers most of your questions. So if you have any others just or you want any other pictures or videos or whatever let me know and i'll get to you them i'll get i'll get you them as soon as possible thanks